This is the next week on flowcharts. Uh, well done for all the submissions I received last week. I'm very impressed with many of the flow diagrams that were drawn and um, people had a really good understanding of what to do there. So let's have a look at recap from what we did last week. So first of all, what is an algorithm? We know that's a step-by-step -step series of instructions to solve a problem. What is a flowchart? A flowchart is a visual way to represent the procedure of an algorithm, step-by-steps that occur during that. And how do we know where a flowchart begins? And this is the oval shape we get at the start. Uh, and it often says something like start or begin in there. What name is given to the start and end symbols in a flowchart? Well, these are terminals. And what do the lines do in a flowchart? And they show the direction of flow. Now, there are lines in here, but they need the little arrow shape on them to show which way around they go. What name is given to the diamond shape? Well, this is an if shape, if decision. So I'd have accepted if statement or decision in your answer. And give an example of an input. An input could be typing on a keyboard or uh, pressing a button and give an example of an output an output could be something displayed on screen or a buzzer sounding so they were the questions from last week and very as I said very impressed with what was recorded let's just now have a look at the flowchart symbols so these are the ones we use here's the terminus the oval here's the process the procedure taking place here's our if decision and here is our direction of flow. So you do need to get used to these flowchart symbols. With our flowchart, this is sequence flow where we have one item followed by next procedure, by next procedure, by next procedure, and so on. We can have a selection where we have an if decision. And this is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is zero degrees. So if it is freezing, if it's less than um, zero, then we need to cover tomatoes. If not, we can uncover them. So that is an if decision. And here we have a repetition. So this repetition is the same as a loop or iteration. It means it goes round. So what we have here, we do the task condition. If it's false, we redo the task and it loops round. Now this could be like if you're playing card game snap, where you turn a card over, that's the task. When you turn the card over, if nobody says snap what you then do is turn the next card over so this just loops round and round until somebody does say snap which would be the uh, condition and therefore that round ends this is the first task that you need to do today and it's looking at an algorithm a flowchart and you need to work out what this flowchart is doing in relation to using a computer so you're going to need to pause the video in a second and have a look at this so now's the time to pause. OK, welcome back. Uh, your next task is to draw another flow chart. And this one is going to ask if you're able to see in the dark. If you can, then your flow chart can go right to the end because uh, you're able to see your way around. But if you can't see in the dark, then you need to check to see if the lamp is plugged in. The uh, light is there. If it is plugged in, then that's fine, um, but you need to find out if the bulb's broken because if the light hasn't switched on. If the lamp is not plugged in, then you need to plug it in and stop. If you've switched your lamp on, if it's plugged in and it's still not lighting up, it could be because the bulb is broken. So you need to see if bulb is broken. If it is, replace the bulb and stop. If the bulb is not broken, then there's clearly something wrong with your lamp. So you need to repair your lamp and stop. So again, you're going to need to pause the video to draw your flow chart to see if you can put this information into the flow diagram. So pause now. Task three. This looks at solving a flow chart, flow diagram. And here we have the instructions for a game. So this is what we need to do with our dice game. If the player rolls a dice, and is given point and the points are then given according to what they roll on the dice depending on what the flow diagram is saying so we need to look at the first one here which is two four and a six so they roll three dice die one die two and die three 
if they're all equal, 2, 4 and 6, and none of them are equal, so it's a no, so we can ignore this bit of the flowchart. Are two of the dice equal? So is two the same as four and six? Well, they're not. So we need to go to this no, and we score zero. And then the and, uh, direction of flow shows we go around this way to the end. So I've given the answer of zero for two, four, six, because none of them are equal. Two of them are not equal. Therefore, we have to go this way around. So I've given the first answer, you now need to solve the next two. So again, pause the video and complete this task. Now, using that previous flow diagram, you can actually get a negative score. So if I go back to the flow diagram, by rolling three dice, you could end up with a minus number. What you need to do is find a set of three numbers that will produce a negative number. Again, pause the video to complete this task. The next task, this is using a function. If we look in our flow diagram here, we have a random one to six. So this is a function and what this function here will do is produce a number randomly between one and six. I just wanna point out my flow diagram that I am missing some arrows here. So every one of these connectors needs to show the flow di uh, direction. I did notice on some of your um, flow diagrams last week that you were missing some of the arrows. So it is important to add these in. Uh, I'm guilty here of not putting arrows in these ones, but they do need the arrows. Um, what you need to do is look at the flow diagram here and explain what will score points and what will not a little bit like in a previous task here where we're given the instructions of how to actually score and the last task that we need to look at is Paul rolls the dice three times, getting six and two on the first throw, one and four on the second throw, and two and three on the third throw. Colleen also rolls the dice three times, getting five and six on the first, four and six on the second, and two and two on the third throw. You need to use this flow diagram to work out the scores for Paul and Colleen and to find out which person won. So they're the tasks that you needed to complete. Uh, for this week, um, I just want to add one more thing about last week's task, and that's the perfect cup of tea. Um, many of you did really well, but some of you, there was no choice to put in sugar or milk. You need to do that. And just one little reminder, if you ever make me a cup of tea or coffee, my coffee, I like one milk, um, a bit of milk, one sugar, and the coffee stirred three times anti-clockwise. Well done everyone for your work last week. I'm looking forward to seeing what work you produce this week.